Hello, Lisa here and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to be bringing you guys an unboxing of the brand new Way of the Panda Tarot by Kim Sand. This is our very own Fables Dan from YouTube and Instagram. My deck and book set arrived just today. So I have lots to talk about including my whole experience with Kim on Kickstarter as well as we're going to open the deck and flip through all the cards and I'm going to give you my first impressions and all of that good stuff. So hang out with me and let's dive right in. So firstly, I just wanted to say that backing decks on Kickstarter can sometimes be a bit nerve-wracking because sometimes things take a long time. You're backing a project that may or may not be really complete and ready to go to print yet. But I have to say that the communication with Kimberly has been outstanding. So she was very communicative throughout the campaign, particularly right in the Kickstarter campaign, but she also was posting updates regularly through her social media, and I just always felt very comfortable and confident with the timeline, and I would not hesitate to back another one of her projects in the future. She was really fun, her energy was very bright and happy throughout the whole process, and if she experienced any hiccups at all throughout, she did not in any way kind of make that her backer's problem, which if that makes any sense, it just felt like she really cared about this being a smooth process for everybody, and it was just really fantastic. I did originally back just the deck, and then partway into the campaign, before the initial, I think it was 30 days had run out, I just realized I really wanted the full-size guidebook to go with it, and boy am I glad, because look at this chunk. And I have so much to say about the guidebook, but I'm going to save that to the end of the video because I know sometimes we just want to jump right in. There was also a few extras included, including a Panda Tarot, Way of the Panda Tarot bookmark, and a couple of cards, including a thank you card to the backers. Look at this cute dude! <laughs> so adorable. So I'm going to just set those off to the side. I'm going to set the book off to the side, and I'm going to get right into the deck. Oh, also, one of the stretch goals was this really cute panda paw bag. This is a cute little canvas bag with a double pull drawstring. Now you guys know I'm already conscripting Peggy to make me a, peg a Peggy bag out of this bamboo fabric um, and a reading cloth, of course, just specifically for this deck. Um, but I'm definitely gonna find a use for this bag. It's really cute and like I said, it's canvas. It's not one of those like really satiny, like flimsy feeling bags. So this will definitely be getting some use for sure. And I'm almost tempted to get out some Sharpies and like color some of the flowers and stuff on here. I don't know how well this fabric would take to Sharpie, but I'm tempted, let me tell you. So I'm gonna set that aside actually all the way out of the way here. And let me grab my scissors and get this plastic started. I should have done that part off camera, but of course I wasn't that bright. Okay, hopefully. I'm always so nervous when I take scissors to the saran. Oh, perfect. And it came off really easy. Let's see if we have another layer underneath. This is a nice sturdy two-piece box. And I really, really, it's such a small thing, but I genuinely appreciate when there are little thumb cutouts because sometimes these boxes can be a little snug. Oh, so cute. Okay, so lifting that off and we have some text on the side. Kimberly San is the panda behind the pandas, the creator of Wave the Panda Tarot. Her lifelong adoration of pandas and love for tarot inevitably found each other in one giant magical bear hug and boom, bam, boom, this deck happened. Ha, ha panda. Oh my god, there's a panda pun in there. That's super cute. And then on this side, we have some information about the illustrator. Celia Labelle is an illustrator based in Barcelona, Spain. She studied fine arts at the University of Barcelona, and her dream is to make a living out of what she loves most, creating beauty. So cute. Oh, and then there's still a, I guess that makes sense, there's still a little white book, which looks like it's actually pretty decent considering it's got a nice little cover. It's not one of those little pamphlet style books, so that's really nice. <laughs> so cute, like a mini book and a big book. Okay, and then we have a plastic sleeve, yay, no more saran wrap. And ooh, okay, so the cardstock is really nice. And can we just talk about the fact, I'm just gonna move this card, that the fabric and the deck back is like basically a perfect match. Oh yes. And I bought this fabric with Peggy. We were at the fabric store and I was like, I'm gonna be getting a Panda Taro. It needs bamboo fabric. And check out that match. Is that not the most perfect? Look at that. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, sorry, that was random. All right, let's get back on track. So cardstock is really nice. Um, I'm not sure of the GSM, but it feels sturdy, but still flexible. This deck is gonna rifle beautifully. There's no edging on the deck, but you do get a hint from the background here of that green, which I love. 
yeah, it's a nice standard size. All right, let's get into the images. I'm gonna zoom us in, and we're just gonna go through this bad boy. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. So we have our fool with his little red panda friend, which I think is super cute, and he's walking on top of the earth. Love that. This magician looks so happy and confident. I mean, how can you look at pandas and not smile, right? I'm gonna move that guy over there, so cute. He's got all of his tools there. Our beautiful empress. The watercolor artwork in this deck is to die for. Oh, sorry, that was my high priestess. <laughs> I said empress. I'm just looking at the artwork and getting kind of lost. I love all these flowers. The emperor. Yeah, he looks like he's got things handled. The hierophant. I really like this like rainbow. The lovers. And of course, because these are pandas, it's fairly non-gender specific, which is really nice. Oh my gosh, this chariot is everything. Look at that motorcycle. That is brilliant. And the motorcycle has wings. Strength. Look at the little mouse. Oh my goodness. The hermit. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I love the Ferris wheel. Oh. Justice. Oh my god, this one's getting a kick to the face. That's amazing. I freaking love that. This really has some interesting imagery to it. I cannot wait to dive into the guidebook and talk to you guys about the guidebook as well. Oh my goodness. The Hanged Panda. Oh, look at all the lightning bugs. Cindy's upside down. Oh, that's great. Oh, that was Peggy in the background. Death. This is interesting because it's almost like, so this guy is gone and there's almost some moss and this other panda's like, yeah, that's how it is. It's sad. Interesting. So much to dig into. Temperance. Ooh, the devil. The tower. I'm just getting a little bit lost in the imagery. I love the world that's been created here. The star. The moon. The sun. That sunflower, I just, oh, so cute. Judgment. And I love the little dragonflies. The world. Oh, I love that instead of dancing, he's playing like a flute. Oh, that's so great. Okay, let's get into the minors. I might have to move these off to the side so I have room. The Ace of Wands. The Two of Wands. Oh, I love that he's looking at a map. The Three of Wands. There's all these like little crystals around him. The Four of Wands. The Five of Wands. Look at this pile of pandas. How great is that? The Six of Wands. Oh yes, look at the little fireworks. Oh, that's so cute. The seven of wands. Oh yeah, he's holding his own. Eight of wands. All the shooting stars. The nine of wands. This is kind of like the goalie card to me, right? It's like the there's the panda and he's like taking his stand, guarding his territory. The ten of wands. Oh my gosh, this cracks me up because it's like, oh, he was carrying his burden just fine, but he's like, there's a tree, I need a nap. I, I need a rest. So much to do intuitively with this artwork. Page of Wands. Oh, I love him. He's just ready for adventure. The Knight of Wands is all in. We got a little Kung Fu Panda action happening. The Queen of Wands. The King of Wands. I love this like jewelry. He's These two you can tell are very dynamic, confident characters. It's interesting because they're all pandas and yet you still get so much personality. Our Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. Oh, this is me. This is when I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? And I'm making lists and there's pros and cons. And I'm like really just researching my way through a situation. Oh, the Three of Swords. The Four of Swords. Time for a rest. The Five of Swords. The Six of Swords. Oh, I love the little paper boat imagery here. The seven. The eight of swords. 
he's stuck. But he's really not as high up as he probably feels, so it's not too hard to get himself out of there if he just kind of relaxes and thinks through the problem. The Nine of Swords. Oh, scary. The Ten of Swords. Oh, the Shattered Mirror here is really interesting. As a reader, again, I love little things like that because they give you new layers of meaning to play with. The Page of Swords, right on with this imagery with all the books stacked up. The Knight of Swords. <laughs> I really just get this feeling here that this is the same panda that gets himself into trouble like we saw with the panda that was up on the eight of swords it's like this is the same dude like he goes rushing in and he gets himself into a predicament right the queen of swords the king okay my favorite suit y'all the ace of cups I'm loving that it's overflowing with like look at this color and this little panda's hanging on like what's in the cup what you got? Oh, love the Two of Cups. The Three of Cups. I do like that we get some hints at these not necessarily being all female. Like, we often see in the Three of Cups just three girls, and I like when we feature multi-gender in the Three of Cups. And even with just the way the pandas are dressed, we get a bit of that energy. Four of Cups. This is definitely a very Rider Waite Smith deck and very easy, I think, for a new reader to pick up. But at the same time, as an intuitive reader, I also feel like there's a lot more to it, especially when we get into the guidebook. I know I keep hinting about that, but I'm excited to show you guys a little bit about the guidebook. Six of Cups. I had to bring this one right up to my face. Oh, so cute. Okay. The Seven of Cups. On point here. Definitely because he's laying on a cloud, right? Eight of Cups. Love the butterfly symbology here because really Eight of Cups moments are butterfly moments. The Nine of Cups. Yay! This is one of my favorite cards of the entire tarot deck in any deck. Um, well, not in any deck, but it's my favorite card, so I always look for a, deck, a card for that one that I really like, a depiction of it. I adore this Ten of Cups with the mama playing with the baby. Oh, the little page, I think I did see the page of cups um, on the Kickstarter campaign. This is another card that I always look at to see if I resonate with it. The Knight of Cups. Oh, this is so great with the way he's like chasing after this little butterfly. Our Queen of Cups, our Comforter, our Nurturer, the King of Cups. I love that there's like a lotus in the cup here. The Ace of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles. Actually, hold on. This is really interesting because they're kind of having to work together. The Three of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles. The Five. Ah, uh, definitely helping each other. The Six. The seven, the eight, the nine, and the ten. We have our page, our knight, our queen, our king, and oh, there's more. Oh, right! I forgot there were some stretch goals. We have our caffeinated panda. This is brilliant, and I love everything about this. The stargazing panda. Oh. The witchy panda. This is life. This entire deck is life. I am loving this. And dream space. Oh, so beautiful. Okay, I am going to zoom us back out a bit, and I'm going to give us a shuffle, and then we're going to take a look at the guidebook. This cardstock feels really, really good, you guys. It's matte, but it's smooth. It doesn't feel, um, it's not that kind of matte that really sticks or feels like it's gonna stick. Oh yeah, that is a satisfying rifle shuffle. Oh yes. I probably shouldn't enjoy that as much as I do, but I do. And I'm probably gonna be working with this deck really soon, and so I just wanted to see how we shuffled. So good. All right, so really easy to get a nice mix on that. I'm going to set these away, set these away, set these aside, and we're going to take a look together at the guidebook. 
Love this, love the box. Thrilled with the art. Oh, let's take a look at the little white book first. So this looks like it's gonna be just a standard. The little black and white book, because of course it's panda, so cute. I love all the puns, it's pretty great. There's the same paw design. Actually, let's zoom us in again. This is the same paw design from the bag. Then we have Once Upon a Panda, a little bit of the story. Once Upon a Tarot, what is tarot? Um, your tarot journey, how to use this book. So it sounds like there's a panda message. There's light and shadow attributes. You could use those as upright and reversed if that's how you read. Um, unlocking your panda powers, battling your panda shadows. I'll enjoy flipping through that actually. Uh, the major arcana, we get right into meanings, and these aren't ungenerous, right? You get a little bit of a message here, and then you get your light attributes and your shadow, which are keywords, and it looks like it does that through the, let's see if it does that in the minors. Yep, in the minors, it's exactly the same amount of information, which I love. Deck creators, I love it when you don't skimp on the minors. Well done. And then how to use the wild cards, which is great. And there's even some spreads. Are you kidding me? Even in the little white book, you have a panda spread. Kung Fu Panda, Cute But Fierce, Celtic Panda, Keep Calm and Panda On. Okay, so that's pretty generous when it comes to a little white book, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Now let's look at, zoom us back out, the Book of Pandas. Now I'm really excited for this book for a couple of reasons. Um, mostly because I knew going in that this was gonna have a lot more to share about the world of the pandas, which was something that Kim said right from the beginning. But after she finished writing the book, she made a video, and if I remember, I will put that up in the cards where she talks about her process with the book. Uh, and it really made me extra excited to get this because she took she went a totally new way. A lot of times guidebooks focus on how to read the tarot, they focus on how to how to pull the meanings out of the cards. And she just instead focused on really pulling you into the world of the pandas. So let's take a look at the contents. So we have once Upon a Panda, The Deck's Origin Story and How to Use This Book. Um, how much of a panda are you? Know thy panda self. Entering the Panda Kingdom, an interactive tarot journey. And then we have the majors, the minors, um, the suits, and then there's an epilogue. And there are 275, I think? 275 pages, yeah. So what's really exciting about this is that she wrote the Book of Pandas to be more like a storybook in the sense that this is great. I love this. There's like basically a quiz for being for figuring out what kind of panda you are. That's amazing. And then it's, it's literally like, you remember those quizzes from like magazines, right? Like what kind of lover are you and stuff? Only this is what kind of panda are you basically. I'm so excited to do that. And then there's a bunch of panda spreads and then we have kind of how to begin the journey. This is really exciting and it looks like there is a meditation here that you can do. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind here. And then we get into the majors and from what I've seen so far just on initial flip through, these are literally written where each entry in the guidebook literally tells you about the panda you see in the card. So instead of focusing on this book being very image heavy, it's very text heavy and it's very much almost story-like. So we begin with, the fool is an adventurous panda that always lives in the moment. His heart is an open field, a fresh canvas waiting for colorful currents to rush in and, and tumble. And it goes on. And then as well, there's some little uh, The Fool's Guide to Conquering the World tips here with just as if he was giving you advice. And then you have a spread for The Fool. And then from what I could tell, there's literally a spread for every single major arcana card. Like, are you kidding? You have literally a spread for every single car. I'm so excited. I can't believe how generous she was with spreads in this book. Like, are you, like the whole way through, spreads for every major arcana. Let's take a look at the minors. So we have Suit of Wands, the Fire Panda, and then information about the Fire Panda. You can call on the Fire Pandas for a flaming paw boost if you are, and then there's a bunch of criteria where you might want to engage with the Fire Pandas. Activating your inner fire panda, a ritual. Are you kidding? This is so meaty. Oh, there's also a kung fu panda spread expanded. Is there, is there a spread? No, okay. There's a spread for the introduction to the suit. And then you have, of course, you're right into, <laughs> you're right into the card. Sorry, I just spotted this little subtext or this little box. Seriously though, do you have a pair of Ray-Bans? Ethan is collecting and his birthday is coming up. So it's literally written as if, so this is Ace of Wands and Ace of Wands, the panda's name is Ethan. It tells us about Ethan. 
Um, let's go into a different spot here. Here we have the Eight of Wands and our panda's name is Sirius and we get to learn about Sirius. Um, here we have Striker. So all the pandas have names. You get to learn about them as you move through the book. This is going to be such a fun deck to work with. I can't even. The two Ten of Swords is Hector. Aw, look at this. Okay, I'm going to read you this. The Ten of Swords. This cannot be, oh, it simply cannot be, but one must shed the hairy layers of one, one's identity to be fluffily reborn. It hurts, though. It really hurts. It feels like someone is rich ripping patches off my fur with off with Gorilla Tape while pouring lemon juice and wasabi down my nose. Honestly, what could be worse? And that's how you feel when you're in a Ten of Swords moment, right? Like, she just... She has managed to capture the personality of an entire deck of cards, and I just cannot wait. Obviously, you guys know that I will have a lot more thoughts once I've worked with this deck for at least a full week. Um, seeing this guidebook and seeing how much there is here, I'm tempted to work with this deck a little longer for my initial um, experience with it, so we'll see how that plays out. But I cannot wait to get my paws all through this deck and get to know it even better. And then, of course, when you get to the end, you have, I believe, an epilogue of some kind. Yeah, there's our King of Pentacles. Is there a guidebook entry, I wonder, for the extra cards? Let's see if there's anything in here about the extras. There may not be. Um, let's see. I don't see anything about the extra cards in here, but there is a blurb in the Little White Book about how to use the extra cards, like as significators or other ways that you can use them. I seriously love the idea of shuffling the caffeinated panda in to the deck as a significator. That's really exciting. This is looking to be an incredible experience. I am so, so happy that I backed this deck. Um, this is totally my aesthetic. Anybody who watches my channel knows this is right up my alley. I am stoked for this deck, not only for the artwork and for the cards and the cardstock, it's all like top notch, but I'm really, really, really excited to spend some good quality time with this guidebook. She puts so much love and heart into this and it shows just with the way that it's put together, the way that she sort of broke the mold of guidebooks and went her own way and just trusted her intuition. I think it really paid off. Just the little bits that I've scanned through and read, it's going to make this entire deck just completely come to life. And what could a deck creator possibly want but to bring their deck and their creation into life, into 3D for us. So thank you so much, Kim, for creating this. Thank you to Celia for, for illustrating it. Here is the information on Kim and the information on Celia. And I will have the link down below where you can, I believe, order the uh, edition of this deck that is coming out after Kickstarter called, I believe, the Dream Edition. Slight color differences. I don't know what the other differences are, but I will put a link so that you can order yourself a copy. And I would not sleep on this one because it is looking like it's going to be a stunner. So stay tuned for more information from my experience with this deck when I do my proper weekly deck review or any other walkthroughs or reviews that I do. But for now, these are my first impressions. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye!